The other day we were cleaning out a storage room upstairs and Lauren stumbled across a newspaper article from the 1950s. The article featured a picture of the second St. James Church, a modest house of worship just off Western Boulevard, next to a picture of the building that we're in today, our stunning Gothic Revival Church towering over Wilshire Boulevard little churches into mighty ones, reads the caption, as true 74 years ago as it is today. The article was touting how revolutionary St. James was in its day for things like using film and audio and education, having a sound system so everyone can hear every part of the service, even the sermon, and for pioneering the revolutionary teacher pay program. A program, and I hope you're all sitting down for this, which paid teachers for their work. <laughs> Seeing this article reminded me of our reading from Ezekiel this morning. In the beautiful first lesson read by Cole this morning, we hear of God plucking a tiny sprig off a mighty cedar tree, planting it on top of a high mountain and watching that tiny sapling grow into a mighty cedar tree that seemed to almost pierce the sky. A noble cedar tree which could be seen by all. And as beautiful and as epic of an image that is, I don't just love that God did that, but I love why God did that. The prophet goes on, under it, every kind of bird will live, and the shade of his branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. A place for all to be seen by all. St. James did indeed go from small to mighty. In that 1950s article, it seemed like it was in its heyday, touting 2,000 baptized members and 1,300 communicants. But no one in that church at that time would have or could have ever imagined what this place would look like 74 years later. Time and time again, we'd struggle with our mission to be a place for all. Whether it was color, gender, orientation, or socioeconomic status, we'd be challenged over the decades to think about just how much we wanted this church to look like the kingdom of God just how much we wanted this to be a place in the shade of its branches where winged creatures of every kind could rest. As we tackled these issues, we lost some people, but we got new ones too. And although we are far from perfect, I can tell you this, our church looks the most like the kingdom of God than any other church I've been to in my life. It looks like the kingdom of God, not just because of its diversity, but because of its missional heart too. A few days ago, I was getting my hair cut and the barber asked me what I did for a living. I told him I was a priest at St. James just two blocks away. And he asked if that was the church that always had a line of people waiting outside for food. To which I smiled and said, yes, that's us. To be seen and noticed in your surrounding community as a group of people living out gospel values is the quintessential hallmark of a healthy and vibrant congregation. Our missional heart is one way we advance the kingdom of God, 
but our world-class liturgy and music is another way, too. People come here on Christmas or Easter and tell us, I've never seen anything like this before. Whist away to a spiritual realm by the smell of billowing incense, the sound of the majestic organ and the angelic choir, and the sight of our grand Anglican processions. People come here on Sunday evenings for evensong, driving hours to have their souls massaged by that ancient office you simply have to sit back and listen to. Lifting up people's hearts from earth to heaven is a call we take seriously. Great as the liturgy and music is, and powerful as our outreach programs are, fueling all of this is our sense of community. Women's groups, men's groups, young adult groups, the African Christian Fellowship, the Korean language community, and are about to launch retirees brunch. It all represents the ways we love God and neighbor. The great commandment in action. The bedrock of our community. In so many ways, we've done an incredible job of living into that call to become a noble cedar, a tree in which winged creatures of every kind may safely nest. All of this is to say that this place is a special place, a profoundly special place. Last week at our quarterly gathering, we shared that our St. James Day celebration this year on July 28th will be our last Sunday in this noble cedar towering over Wilshire Boulevard. For the next year and a half or so, our worship will be in the parish hall. Meanwhile, in here, we'll be painting, rewiring, heating, cooling, relighting, and improving the sound. We'll be filling in empty niches with statues of saints that reflect our community, putting a crown back on the bell tower that fell off decades ago, and making our marble floor shine like it's brand new again. We're doing all this because this noble cedar tree of ours is too important of a nest to let fall to the wayside. Our loving presence tending to those in need, it needs to be here for another hundred years. Our message of inclusivity, that all are welcome and all are loved, that needs to be heard for another hundred years. Our liturgy and music that draws people in and fills their souls with the awe of God needs to be heard for the next 100 years. And we can't do that without your help. So my ask of you all today is this. Pray about how important this place is to you. Pray about what this place has meant to you over the years. Pray about how important it is to you that our missional heart, our unqualified inclusion, and our powerful worship is around for the next 100 years. Not just for the people we know and love, but for those whose identity is known to God alone. In July, we will be asking you all what sort of commitment you might be able to make to this campaign. I'll share with you all, I've made the biggest gift of my life to this campaign. I did so because of what this place has meant to me and because of how strongly I feel that this place needs to be here 
100 years from now, serving the neighborhood, being beloved community, instilling awe and wonder through liturgy and music, and being a place where every type of winged creature can know that they are welcome and they may enter, pray, and rest. <laughs>